Okay, welcome everybody. We are going to be learning a lot today. Specifically, what we're going to be learning today is five strategies to balance your blood sugar and lose weight for good. So my name is Samantha Smith. I'm one of the registered dietitian nutritionists here at Juno Wellness, and I'm also a certified personal trainer. So let's get into the, the information. So first and foremost, we want you to introduce, be introduced to our team. So we have a great medical team here that practices functional medicine. Um, first is Richard Hilburn. He's our family medicine doctor. Um, he is practicing through Goals of Care is his company, and he is also on site. Um, and then me, I'm one of the registered dietitians, Smith Smith, Christina Pastana, who is our clinical nutritionist and kind of our nutrition director. She keeps us all, uh, all in order. So we were very grateful to her. And then Alka Dishpandi, our clinical herbalist and our social media superstar. She's amazing at giving quick tips on um, our social media accounts. So I definitely recommend that you follow those on Instagram and TikTok to learn little tips every day for um, better health, better nutrition, and just overall wellness. So before we start... A little bit about me is I obtained my degree from um, Penn State, Pennsylvania State University, um, and then I also did my dietetic internship with Virginia Tech, um, Go Hokies, so definitely love both of those schools. They've taught me a lot, and that's where I got my degree. Currently, I'm practicing functional nutrition and functional lab testing. So it's really great. We have a ton of functional labs that we do on our website as well, if you want to look into those. Um, but really good information to get down to the, the data, the science, to see what's actually going on internally in your body and to know where we need to start the root cause of certain things. <clears throat> So I specialize in, um, which is great for this talk, but prediabetes and type 2 diabetes management. Um, I also specialize in digestive health, uh, cholesterol management, and sustainable weight loss. So um, our value around weight loss and helping you or whoever comes to us um, achieve weight loss is going to be a long-term goal. So we're not, we're not going to do this weight loss, the super quick, this diet cycle, um, cause they don't work long-term. They're, they're not giving you those foundational habits that you need to live that happy, healthy lifestyle, um, for, for all your days. So that's, that's our motto. That's our goal. Um, that's our values. Um, and then some fun things. So my favorite food is hummus. Love hummus. I could put it on everything. It's like people help how, how people love ketchup. I can put hummus on everything. And then something you did not know about me is my favorite show is Ted Lasso. Oh, it's such a heartwarming show. So I love that. Um, quick disclaimer before we start, but this in, the information in this presentation is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for educational purposes only, and you assume full responsibility for how you choose to use this information. So um, just, just take that into consideration as we take, take you through this education process. So <clears throat> first and foremost, let's start with the definition. So to help manage blood glucose, we first need to understand what blood, blood glucose or blood sugar is. So blood glucose is often referred to as blood sugar, which is a type of sugar that circulates in your bloodstream and serves as a primary source of energy for your body's cells. So super, super important to provide our cells energy. So essentially what's happening is glucose enters your bloodstream by the way of digestion of certain carbohydrates in, in the foods that you're eating. So some examples of, of good, um, or some good examples of carbohydrates would be rice, pizza, candy, chips, bread, flour, flour tortilla, fruits, and beans. So these are largely carbohydrate rich foods. Um, and we'll talk about how they affect your blood sugar here as we go. <clears throat> So something a bit really big question to note here is, is blood sugar bad? Short answer, no. <clears throat> but we'll talk, we'll get into more of the details of why. 
So blood sugar is your body's main source of fuel for your cells. It's like the gas to your car. So let's think about this. If you don't have any gas for your car, you're not going to get very far. Does that make sense? So if you don't have any fuel for your body, you're not going to be able to do the things you love, the, the things that keep you going every day, the little activities, the errands, the, the work that you enjoy to do, because you're not going to have the energy to do that because you don't have the fuel for yourself. So it is super necessary to perform every, um, so blood sugar is very important to perform these everyday activities like walking, thinking, digesting, going to the gym, cooking, reading, anything that you can think of, tapping your leg, that requires blood sugar. So this is why it's not necessarily bad. It's just in what context is it good versus bad. So what's not good specifically for blood sugar is when it is elevated or very low blood glucose for extended periods of time. So it's okay for it to fluctuate occasionally, but when we chronically have elevated blood glucose or chronically have very low blood glucose, this is where we see the issues as far as our health is concerned. So something that we want to note there. So quick fact before we get into um, more of the education and the tips is the average American eats a whopping 20 teaspoons of sugar every day, according to the US government figures. That's well above the American Heart Association's recommendation for six teaspoons for women and nine teaspoons per men for day, for the whole day, which is crazy if you think about it. So we are close to doubling, tripling what we actually need throughout the day as far as our added sugar intake. Um, and it's not necessarily your fault in the sense of some foods that we eat every day, we don't, they don't taste sweet, but they have added sugar and they kind of sneak under the radar there. Um, so some of these foods would be pasta sauces, ketchups or condiments, um, cereals, granolas, granola bars have a lot of added sugar. Um, any, any drinks like energy drinks, specialty coffee drinks, um, juice drinks, anything like that. And then a big one is yogurt. A lot of people don't realize the amount of added sugar that is in yogurt, specifically the flavored yogurt. Um, so just things to bring more awareness to how much added sugar is on those food labels when you intake that certain food. Um, so it's all about awareness because these things can kind of fly under the radar and then we have elevated blood sugar and we're like, why? We, I, I don't need a lot of sugar, but it's in these, these common foods that we eat every day. So what's too much or too little? So as we can see here on this left side, we have... Um, a blood vessel, and then we see these red blood cells here, and then these white dots in here, these are depicted as our glucose. Um, so as you can see on this left-hand side, it says hyperglycemia. This is elevated blood glucose. So there's too much blood glucose or blood sugar in that blood vessel at this point, which has a lot of consequences if that's a chronic habit or chronic behavior for our body. And then in the middle here, we see this as the normal range. So we see a lot less of the glucose cell or particles in there, um, more, more along the lines of what we want to see. And then on this right-hand side here, we have hypoglycemia. We only see a few um, specks of the glucose, which this is not enough for, for what we need in our body. So this is where we have more of those, that faint feeling. We don't have enough fuel. We don't have enough energy. Um, Today, we will be discussing hyperglycemia, so that high blood glucose, um, and focusing on that. So let's see here. So this is a really um, great slide as far as elevated blood glucose and its consequences. So there's there can be quite a lot of consequences associated with chronically elevated blood sugar levels or blood glucose. Um, and the first one is insulin resistance. So when we have an overconsumption of sugary or high carb foods, it can lead to insulin resistance. And what is insulin resistance specifically? So when cells, it's when cells become less responsive 
responsive to insulin signals, it's harder for that glucose to enter the cell, leading to elevated blood sugar. Um, so, so what's happening here? So insulin, if you didn't know, so insulin is very necessary in the process of getting glucose into cells. So what, what is insulin's role? Insulin essentially, it unlocks the cell so that the glucose can enter and give that cell the fuel, the energy that it needs to, to do those metabolic processes, to, to give us energy throughout the day, to do all the things that we love. So but there are receptors on the outside of the cell. So if we have elevated blood sugar levels for extended periods of time, those receptors become tired, they become overworked, and they become less responsive to the insulin saying, hey, open the door, I need to get this glucose in the cell. They become less responsive to that. So that's what insulin resistance is over time. So, in, so insulin resistance essentially causes less glucose to be entering the cells and more glucose to be in that blood vessel like we saw on the last page and not being put to work in, in the cell, essentially. And then what happens when we have elevated blood glucose and then we have insulin resistance chronically is we have that increased diabetes risk. So when we have this prolonged high blood sugar, it can increase your risk for developing type 2 diabetes specifically. So Type 1 diabetes is our body doesn't produce enough insulin, so that's more of a genetic factor. Um, we can't really do much to, to reverse or cure or anything with that. It's more about just providing our body with the insulin, um, and that's usually early onset, so we're going to see that in younger kids or um, teens. And then type 2 diabetes is largely related to this insulin resistance factor. Um, so this elevated blood sugar levels for extended period of time that develop into in insulin resistance and then furthermore increase that risk for type 2 diabetes. So this condition arises when the body either it, it becomes resistant to that insulin receptors on the outside of the cell because of that high blood glucose. So it's it's largely related to those food choices, that lifestyle choice that has caused this insulin resistance over time. Another consequence of elevated, elevated blood glucose is inflammation and tissue damage. So when we have elevated blood sugar levels, um, this can trigger inflammation in the blood vessels and the nerves. So as we saw again in the last here, we'll go back. But as we saw on this left-hand side, there's a ton of glucose if we have elevated blood sugar levels in that blood vessel. Um, so over time, that's going to cause a lot of inflammation in there because it's not necessarily supposed to be sitting in the blood vessel. It's supposed to be getting into the cell. Um, so that's where we're going to see the, the inflammation arise. Um, and, then, and then when we have elevated inflammation for a long period of time, this leads to damaging of the tissues and then of other organs over time. So it's really about that time frame of chronically high blood sugar and chronic inflammation, um, which could be anywhere from six months to, to years. Um, but this is where there where we see those consequences also related with elevated blood glucose. Next consequence we would discuss is weight gain. So when we have excess glucose in the bloodstream, if this is not going to be used for energy, it's going to get stored as fat. So this is ultimately contributing to that weight gain and potentially leading to that obesity risk um, or obesity related complications too. that metabolic syndrome that also has other issues associated like high cholesterol and um, joint pain because of the added weight and things like that. Um, and then finally, another um, consequence related to all of these essentially is other long-term complications. So over time, if we have elevated blood glucose, there can be serious complications associated with heart disease risk, nerve damage, kidney problems, vision impairment, largely related to a lot of these factors, insulin resistance, type two diabetes. But if it's uncontrolled um, blood sugar or uncontrolled inflammation, this is gonna ultimately spiral into other long-term complications that that are not necessarily gonna be beneficial for our health. Um, so so definitely want to consider these consequences when when we are trying to manage our blood sugar. 
Okay, another great, this is another great visual. So this is the blood sugar and weight and how they are related. Um, so this cycle really depicts what's going on in our body really well. So as we know, insulin resistance and weight gain are closely interconnected due to the role of insulin, insulin regulating blood sugar and fat storage. So here's, here's kind of how all these five steps are, are related. So first and foremost, what's the role of insulin? So insulin is a hormone, if we didn't know that. So that's, it's really important to, to consider that. Um, but when we consume carbohydrates, they are broken down into glucose in the body. This causes the blood sugar levels to rise. And then once those blood sugar levels rise, the insulin is then going to be, which is produced by the pancreas, is going to be released. And it's going to act like kind of like I said before, but it's going to act as that key that unlocks the cell to allow that glucose entry, where it is either in the cell, it's, that glucose is going to be used for immediate energy, or it's going to be stored for later as glycogen. So the, the insulin in this part of the, the process is super, super important. However, when we have extended periods of time of elevated blood sugar levels, so we have a lot of glucose in the cell or in the body trying to get into the cells. We talked about this. The insulin is, is constantly bombarding the cells, receptors saying, hey, open the door, let the glucose in. It becomes overworked. So when we're having all these, these added sugar foods or these high refined carbohydrate foods like donuts, ice cream as depicted here, over time, for if we eat like this for, for six months, a year, we're eventually going to develop this insulin resistance because our body cannot handle this much amount of glucose in the system at one time to get it into our cells. So then the, the insulin signals are hip hindering that glucose uptake. So not as many glucose are getting into the cell for energy. And then our body's still like, oh, well, I'm still hungry. I'm still thirsty because uh, you're not actually getting the energy into the cell and then you're eating more. But what's happening to the glucose that's not getting into the cell is like we talked about the weight gain, but it's, it's being stored as fat because our body's like, oh, we have too much glucose in the cell right now. We have an overabundance of energy. We need to store this for later, for a later date when we're going to be more active or we're going to need to, to use more of this energy. But right now, we don't need this right now. So our body is going to convert this, um, convert this, this energy production gets converted into fat by the liver, which this process is called lipogenesis. Um, and then this is going to be stored in adipose tissue, which contributes again to that weight gain. So that's kind of the process there of what's happening. And then we have this vicious cycle. So then when we have higher insulin levels due to that insulin resistance we talked about before, it not only promotes fat storage, but it also inhibits the breakdown of stored fat. So when our insulin is not doing its job, when it's just higher in the bloodstream because it's the cells are resistant to it. It can't actually help the glucose get in the cells. It's going to be elevated as well. And that's going to affect other aspects of the body as far as fat storage and fat breakdown for energy. So this causes some other, other impacts on other hormones in the body. For example, the hunger hormone. So this is called ghrelin. And this is kind of what tells our body, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm full. Things like that. But if our insulin if our insulin hormone is, is elevated, it's also going to um, cause changes to that ghrelin, which is going to make you have increased appetite for especially carbohydrates and make it harder for individuals to feel full after meals, which is also going to lead to that increased calorie consumption and increased weight gain too. And then with all of that, we see these metabolic changes and this obesity risk. So with that, these metabolic changes, it's affecting your ghrelin, it's affecting your ability to store fat, to break down fat. And then over time, this cycle of insulin resistance, increased insulin levels, 
fat storage can contribute to that obesity level. And then obesity in, in turn exacerbates that insulin resistance even more, creating a really challenging cycle for to get out of and, and for future health concerns too. Um, so that's where this, this is kind of a, a vicious cycle, but we definitely want to avoid getting into this cycle. But if we are, we need to try to manage it and, and reduce any insulin resistance as much as possible through diet, lifestyle um, factors, and, and bring that back to baseline as a stable blood sugar level, which we'll, we'll talk more of tips on how, how we can do that. Okay, so this is also a really good um, visual just to show you what happens in your body when you intake a larger um, high refined carbohydrate or um, added sugar food. So as we can see, the, the baseline or the idea of balanced blood sugar range is that green path in the middle. So that's kind of the goal of what we're looking for. We want our glucose levels to be staying within that range. But say we're rushing in the morning, we don't have a lot of time, we're like, oh, I gotta eat breakfast, but I don't know what to eat real quick. So we pour ourselves a big bowl of cereal with milk, which is largely a lot of added sugars, a lot of refined grains in there, not a lot of protein or healthy fats in that meal. So what, what's gonna happen in our body? Our body is amazing at breaking down carbohydrates for quick energy. So that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to break it down and we're going to get this big glucose spike in our, sense, in our system, which we're going to get temporarily a lot of energy. And then our body is going to be like, whoa, 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 we have a lot of glucose in the system. Pancreas released that insulin so we can bring it back down. So then insulin's released and it gets the glucose into the cells, there's less glucose in the bloodstream, and it brings it down, and that's when we have this blood sugar crash, we feel tired, we feel crabby, we feel the need to eat again. And then we're like, oh, I need another quick energy, like I'm tired, I have a crash. And then you grab a granola bar, and the same process happens again. You get a lot of quick carbohydrates, not a lot of protein or healthy fats in that granola bar. And you get this spike again, your insulin's uh, secreted again, it brings it back down. And we just see this, this roller coaster of high blood sugar and low blood sugar throughout the day, which is not what we want to see. And this can really lead to, throughout the day, anger, mood swings, sugar cravings, energy crashes, and it can also affect our mental health too. Um, so not really what we're looking for as far as managing our, our health throughout the day. And when we see this perpetual, this process through throughout the day, every day for six months, that's when we're going to see this, this insulin resistance develop because your body cannot handle handle this, this amount of, of spike and crash constantly. Um, that's where we need to manage with our diet a little bit better. Um, so, and that's where we see some symptoms of poor blood sugar management. So we see that weight gain, we see that ob obesity that we saw in that vicious cycle. We also see some inflammation, which can lead to high cholesterol. We see uncontrolled cravings, extreme fatigue, excessive thirst or hunger. Because the glucose isn't getting into the cells, our body still thinks we're hungry. Um, we see our sleep being affected by this, mood swings, and irritability. So definitely not what we're looking for or how we want to feel on a daily basis, um, which that's where at the very baseline, managing our blood sugar levels are just going to help us feel good, which that's the first and foremost. We want to be healthy, but we also want to feel healthy throughout the day. Um, so what do we want it to look like? We want it to look like more of this ideal balanced blood sugar, um, which also helps us get to that ideal weight loss um, method too. Because the more we can keep these ideal balanced blood sugar within range, the, the better off your, your weight loss journey is going to be as well. So what we see when we have balanced blood sugar throughout the day is we see mental clarity, we see more energy, and we have a more balanced mood, which I, I don't know about you, but I would love to, I love to have a balanced mood throughout the day, especially with life already being up and down. You gotta, oh, you gotta have a balanced um, mood to get you through. And then, so 
you're 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 saying okay this is great i want to i want to be in this balanced blood sugar range but how do i even know if i'm out of range well we can test for that so how do you know if your blood sugar is under control well, first and foremost, just a little definition. So glucose is measured in milligrams per deciliter and can be accurately measured by taking a blood sample after fasting for eight hours. Um, so that's where we're usually going to do it in the morning, um, just so you can fast overnight. And then the results of normal blood sugar tests should be in a range of 70 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. This is kind of that goal ideal range we're looking for. And what labs are used to assess blood glucose? So, um, and what values should we be aiming for? First lab would be the hemoglobin A1C test. This me measures your blood sugar level over the past two to three months. Um, so it's really that good summary of what's going on internally as far as your blood sugar. Um, and this is usually what they're gonna use to determine if you have prediabetes, type two diabetes, all of those. So a normal A1C, is 5.7% or lower. We, that's the goal. Um, when it's between 5.7 and 6.4%, this indicates you're in that prediabetes range. And when it's 6.5% or higher, this is a diagnostic of type 2 diabetes. Another test we can do is the fasting blood sugar test. This just measures your, your blood sugar in that moment after an overnight fast. This is not eating. So a fasting blood sugar level should be 99 milligrams per deciliter or lower, which that is our normal, that's our goal. 100 to 125 indicates that pre-diabetes range and 126 or higher indicates type two diabetes range. Um, again, this is the snapshot of, of that current moment. That's why this A1C test that we talked about on the last slide, this summary, this is more overall comprehensive to determine how your blood sugar has been. And then the third test we could do is a glucose tolerance test. So this measures your blood sugar before and after you have, you drink this lick, this liquid that contains glucose. So it's like this thick uh, sugary drink. Um, but we want to, this is testing. We want to see how well your body is handling that glucose. So how quickly that insulin gets the glucose into your cells to be used for energy. Or if there's not, if there's insulin resistance, this is going to tell us. So after that two hours, after this drink, a blood sugar level of 140 milligrams per deciliter or lower is what we want to see. 140 to 199 indicates you're in that pre-diabetes range and 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher indicates you're in that diabetes range. So you have a lot of insulin resistance, your glucose is not being used effectively in your system. So now we, now we know how to measure our blood sugar. What can we do to regulate it? So here we have five strategies to help regulate your blood sugar. <clears throat> First and foremost, food pairings are a must. So what do I mean by food pairings? Food pairings would be pairing with the other macronutrients. So there's three major macronutrients in, in our foods. There's carbohydrates, there's protein, and there's fat. As we can see by this chart, super cool, there is a um, carbohydrates, we saw, they, they break down super quickly in our system, and then we crash because if we're just relying on carbs, that's not gonna be enough. Whereas proteins break down a lot slower over time, so over that five hour mark, um, much, much slower than carbohydrates. And then fats actually break down the slowest in our system. So they keep us that steady release of energy in our system, which is great. That's what we want to see. So how does this relate to food pairing? Well, when we pair those carbohydrates with a protein or a fat, it's going to also, it's going to impact the release of that carbohydrate in your body. So it's going to slow the release of that carb breakdown and have a more stable energy production overall. So how do we implement food pairing? What do we eat? We can, here are some examples of how to include three macronutrients in the main meals, protein, carbs, and fat. The goal is to get all three in the meals, but if it's a snack, we're okay with just two. 
Um, so for example, breakfast would be eggs or protein, cheese, a little bit of protein and healthy fat, Ezekiel toast, which is more of just a seeded toast, um, so has more of that fiber, whole grain in there, and avocado, which is that healthy fat as well. Lunch example would be chicken or protein, brown rice or complex carbs, so more of that high fiber carbohydrate, Evo, which is extra virgin olive oil, and then zucchini, which is that fiber. Then dinner would be a spring mix salad with shrimp, which is our protein, tomatoes, more of those nutrients, quinoa, which would be our complex carbohydrate, so it has that high fiber filled carb, and then seeds, which would be our healthy fat. And finally, some snack options just to include healthy proteins and fats along with our carbohydrate. So you can still have your dark chocolate, your, your fruit throughout the day. You just need to pair them appropriately. So this is where we want to pair the dark chocolate with the almonds, so that healthy fat. And then the banana with almond butter, also a healthy fat. So if we pair that carb with that healthy fat, which we saw releases energy a lot slower, it's going to slow the release of that energy from the dark chocolate in your system too. Next, next tip would be not all carbs are created equal. So um, there's really two types of carbohydrates that we put them into categories. So there's complex and simple carbohydrates. So it's really about the breakdown of them in our system and how refined certain grains are. So a high glycemic index carbohydrate would be the simple carbs. So they're super refined. They don't have a lot of fiber in them, which fiber breaks down a lot slower in our body um, and slows the release of that carbohydrate breakdown. Whereas low glycemic index breaks down a lot slower. Um, these we would consider complex carbs. So these have more of that fiber content. So first up, simple carbohydrates. So as I said, these are digested quickly and release immediate bursts of glucose into the bloodstream. That's why you might feel that rush of energy when you eat a dessert, only to be followed by intense fatigue when the sudden burst of energy is depleted. So some examples of these would be pizza, pasta, cookies, brownies, cakes, ice cream, white rice, pretzels, candy, chips. So definitely all the foods that we would consider yum treat foods, but it's not necessarily that we have to cut these out. We just have to be more aware of these foods as far as food pairing and, and incorporating them appropriately throughout our diet to make sure that we're reaching our health goals, but still enjoying food. And complex carbohydrates, these are digested much more slowly and supply a lower, more steady release of glucose into the bloodstream due to their added fiber component. As with simple sugar, some carb complex carb foods are better than others. So there's a couple examples, um, brown rice, quinoa, barley, lentils, black beans. So love beans and lentils because they have so much fiber on them, potatoes and sweet potatoes with the skin. So um, the fiber, a lot of the fiber on a potato is on the skin portion. So don't, don't peel your potatoes because that's, you're missing out on all the good fiber. Oatmeal and then butternut squash are good complex carbs as well. Next up, portion size matters. So not only do we have to be weary of certain carbohydrates and food pairing, but we need to make sure that we're intaking the appropriate portions for our body. So a quick tip to do this is using your hands because I know some people like to track on apps and and weigh their food and stuff like that, but it's not necessarily sustainable long-term. And you're not always gonna have a food scale with you or or even your phone. Um, so something that you will always have with you is your hands, which this is a good way to just easily track. It's not that you have to pick up all your food and make sure they fit appropriately. It's more of just a guesstimation and, and being aware of the portions. Um, so, and also what's cool about your hands is your hands are specific to you. So my hands are a little bit on the smaller side. So I need a smaller portion of protein or carbs and things like that. Whereas a man that's six, five, he's going to have a lot bigger hands than me. Um, and, and need a bigger portion, which is makes sense because he's, he's, 
larger, taller, gonna need more macronutrients than I would. So quick tips. So protein, a serving of protein would be about the palm size of your hand. Um, veggies would be two cupped hands. <coughs> Excuse me. Veggies would be two hands cupped together. Um, so this is vegetables or leafy greens. Fruits would be one cupped hand. Starches would be one one fist hand. Fats would be the tip of your of your thumb there. So like oils, nut butters, things like that. And then cheese would be the size of your full thumb. So it's super important just to be aware of these portion sizes. Okay. Next up, we want to ditch the artificial sweeteners as far as our blood sugar. So if we want to manage elevated blood sugar, artificial sweeteners are not the way to go. Um, so here's a quick study about it, but there's effects of artificial sweeteners on insulin resistance among type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. Oops. So this is a really great article that um, shows us exactly how artificial sweeteners affect our body and what they what they do to our body in the sense of, yes, artificial sweeteners may seem healthier because they don't have the calories that that real sugar or um, that, yeah, that that um, white sugar or or brown sugar, anything like that would have. However, they do affect our body in a similar way. So, a little clip from this article is the ingestion of these artificial sweeteners results in the release of insulin from the pan pancreas, which is mistaken for glucose due to their sweet taste. This increases the level of insulin in blood, in the blood, eventually leading to decreased receptor activity due to insulin resistance. So what this is telling us is that even though these artificial sweeteners don't have the calories, the same amount of calories as other sugars do, since they are sweet, they're super sweet, they're about 600 times as sweet as white sugar, but since they are still sweet, our body still thinks this is glucose and releases insulin from the pancreas to get this glucose into the cells. But over time, if we're still intaking too much of this artificial sweetener, it's still going to have the same effect on that insulin resistance. And those receptor activities are going to decline, even, even though this artificial sweetener doesn't have the same caloric intake as other sugars do. So that's where we want to avoid artificial sweeteners as much as possible. Okay, next up, last tip, we want to have adequate supplementation. So along with dietary and lifestyle changes, we need to implement the correct supplements to, to support our, our health goals, to support this, this elevated blood glucose and bring it back to baseline. Um, because it's not just a one size fits all. We need to find what works for us. And some people, um, the, the diet might work, but they might need a little bit added support with this supplementation. So some of our favorites for blood sugar management would be Gymnema, which is our first one here. It's more of an herbal remedy, but this is super cool in the fact of <clears throat> it will curb your sugar cravings. Yes. So gymnema will curb your sugar cravings. And what does this mean? So when you, if you normally have a sweet treat at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I want you to take the gymnema 20 minutes before this time that you usually want a snack or a sweet sugary snack and just watch. The gymnema is going to kind of deter you from having that sugar craving, which it's am amazing for that in the moment need for um, that sugar or that, that sweet treat. 
Um, berberine is the next one. This is a really great antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Um, and research, there's a lot of research on berberine, but it shows that it actually brings down glucose and A1C in conjunction with your diet and lifestyle changes. But it also really supports healthy weight management too, which is that's, that's the whole goal. We want to manage your blood sugar, but we also want to have that sustainable weight loss too. The next one, vitamin D. Everyone needs vitamin D, especially in our area, um, and especially the amount that we are outside throughout the day. We're likely not getting enough from, from the sun um, because even when we are outside, we have clothes kind of blocking our body, so we're not we're not absorbing those nutrients or the vitamin D into our skin as much as we would if we're like laying on a beach somewhere. Um, and then also vitamin D is really good for blood sugar management because it supports your pancreas's release of insulin. And research shows that there's a correlation between high blood sugar levels and low vitamin D levels. So there's definitely an impact there as far as vitamin D is concerned. So it's, it's a good idea to make sure that your vitamin D levels are are where they need to be, or at least get blood work to, to see where they're at and see if you need that supplemental support. Okay, and then the next one is chromium. So chromium is really good in the sense of this one supports your insulin sensitivity. So you know those receptors on the outside of your cell? Chromium helps them to not become as resistant. So this is really going to be perfect for anyone with insulin resistance and kind of alleviating some of that insulin resistance, again, along with the diet and lifestyle change. And then the next two are fenugreek and psyllium. So these are really high fiber-filled supplements, and they support the body's breakdown of carbohydrates in a slower fashion. So when we have these fibers in our body, they're also going to promote that carb release in in that slower slower release of energy instead of the spike and the drop cinnamon is the next one cinnamon's really great and studies show how how the studies show the improvement in insulin resistance with consistent intake and cinnamon's so natural like you could just put some cinnamon in your coffee every day it's not going to be the 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 high dose that you would get in a supplement, but it's worth a shot to see if that's going to bring down your, your A1C over time. And if, if it doesn't, then we need a higher dosage and, and maybe a supplemental capsule to make sure that you get more cinnamon content throughout the day. And then the last one, bitter melon. This actually is super cool because it acts as insulin in some capacity. So it, it's actually improving the glucose's ability to enter the cell. So it has some of those similar properties of insulin. And then there's some other supplementation options. So these are professional products that support high blood sugar. So these kind of take some of those nutrients and join them together. Um, so for example, glucose support formula, this June of molecular, um, this has cinnamon, chromium, and ALA, which is alpha lipoic acid, which is really great for supporting uh, weight management, but it contains all of those in, in this one capsule. So it's kind of taking all those good, those good properties from the other supplements and putting them together into this great, amazing formula for you. <clears throat> And then the next one is metaglycemic and ultra glucose control. So these are similar. Um, ultra glucose control is one, first and foremost, it's a powder. So it's a protein powder. It has added fiber. It has chromium and vitamin D to support the blood sugar, but it also is it's more of like a multivitamin. So it's supporting your cells in that way as well. So it's giving you all the vitamins and minerals that you need in a lower dose, but it's, it's, an adequate amount to add to a smoothie to make sure that you're getting the protein, the fiber, your multi, and then also the chromium and the vitamin D to support that glucose. And then some other ones would be diabinol, metabolic, and metaglycemics. These are all very similar to the glucose support formula. Um, metaglycemics in particular has cinnamon, green tea, which is great for weight management, alpha lipoic acid, and it had, it's more of that multivitamin as well. So it has other vitamins and minerals to support cell functioning. Okay. So 
once we start to manage our blood sugar a little bit better, we want to monitor and support our body in this sense. So what ways can we do this? Well, one, we want to do labs to assess assess our blood sugar regulation. So hemoglobin A1C, the CMP panel with the glucose, the two-hour glucose tolerance test with insulin, and then also monitoring your glucose every day with a sensor freestyle Libre. So these, most insurances, um, if you if you submit a request, you, you should be able to get one of these. Um, most insurances will cover, um, but it's great to just use this and learn what your body needs and also learn how certain foods affect your body in particular. So how a donut affects your glucose or how having the donut after a balanced meal with a healthy fat, protein, and complex carb, and then having a sugary sweet after, see how that affects your body. Because everyone's different at the end of the day, and, and you kind of have to test what's going to work for you and what's going to work best in your lifestyle. So the sensor um, freestyle levate, this is for 14 days. So it really gives you a lot of time to kind of play with it and see what's going to work best. And then other monitoring and support is going to be your healthcare professional. So this is why I'm here. This is why I do my job because I want to help people live the, the healthiest, best version of their life every day and feel the best um, throughout the day. So that's, that's my, that's my goal. And um, I really have seen a lot of improvements as far as with my patients specifically, when we manage their blood sugar, their life changes. And that's where we, it's kind of one of those foundational things that we need to start with. And then we'll assess other symptoms. But usually that's going to that's gonna clear up a lot of things for them and get them back on the right track. So I definitely see a need for everyone, um, everyone I meet to manage their blood sugar or at least become aware in methods to managing blood sugar and eating appropriately for your body. Um, so some things that you'll get when you work with me specifically is we do personalized recommendations just for you. So each one of my patients, I meet with them, I get all this information about them. And then I build them a nutrition protocol that fits their lifestyle, fits their goals. It's not a copy paste. This is, this is built. Each, each one of my patients is getting something new and different that is specific to what they need. Um, and then we also do menu planning, which is also personalized. So this is a separate service. Um, we also do labs and body composition scale so we can monitor progress and, and see how things are going internally and get the data that we need to, to make the changes. Um, and then, of course, I'm your accountability. So if, if you know, if, if you, for example, if you go to the gym, if you have a workout buddy, you're more, you're 10 times more likely to show up um, and not bail if you have someone there waiting for you. And that's what I can be for you. I'm, I can be that accountability that everyone needs. So it's, it's just a matter of, of staying disciplined to yourself and I can help you do that. Um, and then treatment plan. So like I talked about the personalized recommendations, the nutrition protocol I build out is going to be dietary lifestyle and supplement recommendations, um, again, specific to you. And then um, the great news is we accept most ins major insurances. So right now we accept Cigna, Medicare, TRICARE, United, and Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, so, so definitely sign up if you have one of these. If not, message me and we will see what we can do as far as out-of-network benefits and things like that. Um, but it's really easy to book a consultation. You can just call or you can book online. And I'll just walk you through how to do that real quick. So you're going to go to our website. It's junowellness.com. You're going to click this tab, Nutrition Consultations. Then you're going to find me. Um, currently, I'm the only one that accepts insurance. Um, so if you want it covered by insurance, you'll need to book with me. Um, you can either book a free 15-minute call so we can discuss your expectations and goals a little bit more. Or if you're ready after hearing this talk, if you're ready to make that, that life change, just go ahead and book an initial consultation. And then it's going to walk you through some options. So you can do in person, by the phone, or online video chat. Then you're just going to pick a date and a time. Um, so it's as simple as that. So overall, 
Our goal is to help you balance your blood glucose, lose weight, and achieve your best self. And that's why I'm here. So please use me as a resource. I hope you learned a lot from this, this talk, a lot of information that you can implement into your life, um, because that's, that's the goal. We want you to be feeling good, long-term, happy, healthy um, for as long as possible. So here's my contact. Um, please reach out to me with questions or if you need help scheduling or if you want to learn more about insurance coverage. Okay. Thank you for listening.